是在街上的大型海报，或是在大荧幕上，相信观众对《纳尼亚传奇》贾斯潘王子一定不会陌生。不过现在娱乐在亚洲要让你和班巴恩斯面对面。担任首映会和记者会主持的佩岑也和班巴恩斯及导演安德鲁·亚当森最近距离的接触，所有精彩画面就在今天的《娱乐在亚洲》。年仅二十六岁的英国帅哥班巴恩斯却凭中选挑到两出任《纳尼亚传奇》第二集的男主角。在这部电影之前，主要只在舞台剧中演出的他，只有在去年暑假电影《星辰传奇》中小小搭过一脚，身负超越第一集全球七亿美金的票房成绩，对这么一个新人来说压力很大，但同样也让他的名字瞬间家喻户晓，成为少女型偶像。How do you feel when you see your poster? You're in the middle and you know, all handsome looking. But the, mm, thank you. Um, I, don't, I don't know. It's a, it's a combination of things. Mostly it's just weird. Mostly it's just, it's just surreal. I mean, you walk, you know, you drive down Sunset Boulevard and there you are, you know, 15 stories high and and it, it is surreal and it, it's a little bit. It's embarrassing, and but it's flattering at the same time. And you know, a big part of me thinks it's really cool, and then another part of me worries that you know this is kind of an ensemble film. Why is there not? Why? Why haven't they got a busy poster like they had for the last one? You know, suddenly I feel like pressure to be this kind of action hero, which is not the character at all. Right. Um, but you know, it's 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 great, and it's scary. And, you know. <laughs> Did you try to, you know, take a picture? I have one, yeah. I did. Really? Yeah, Can picture. you fit in? Because your poster are all like. Well, I, I took it like this, and so my head is really big, and the poster looks really small in the background, but it's actually like the size of a, build, a building. Right. You did a lot of training for the movie. Yes. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, um, well, we shot the movie almost chronologically, so the, sort of, the first sort of opening horse chase sequence that you see was one of the first things we shot, so I had to get kind of quite good on the horse quite quickly, because I was riding through rivers and forests, and I hadn't really done much of it before. The first few days, you know, the horse was definitely riding me. I was just kind of a bit shaken around by it, and had no idea what was going on, and the producers came down the third day and were like, he's really dizzy. And I was like, well, no, give me a chance. But literally, a couple, oh, sort of a week later, something just kind of clicked into place. Oh, this is how it works. You know, as soon as you stop thinking it's a motorbike, it's fine. But And I loved it. I just as soon as I started enjoying it, it right. came very easily. But if you think about it, well, it, although it looks really cool, you know, on the horseback, but it's actually very dangerous. Did you get hurt at all? Um, no, I mean the horse. The horse slipped a couple of times. It slipped once in the river and once in, 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 in the studio. Uh -huh. But both times, somehow I managed to stay on the horse. The horse sort of fell and then got back up, and I was still on it. I mean, I had no idea quite how. But. Is there any safety requirement for you when you're riding? Um, there was one scene where the horse had to kind of rear up, and I really wanted to do it. And they said that the horse had been slipping in rehearsals, so they were going to get the double to do it. And uh -huh. you know, I, I managed to do it once, and I think I hope that that's the, that's the uh, right. Cause, shot that they used. Because we were told that you're doing all these Most of it, yeah. I mean, there's a few wide shots, very wide shots, where you see, um, you know, someone on a horse riding in the distance. That now often that's my riding double because we were off shooting a dialogue scene somewhere else. Oh. Um, so, um, but yeah, a lot of it I did myself, and I even tried to do some of the stunts and things myself. The, yeah. There's a bit at the end where I fall into this pit during mm -hmm. the battle sequence, and. Right. They asked. They made me do it, but they built up the crash mats. This pit was kind of this deep, and they built up the crash mats almost to the top. So I only had to flip over once, and I fall into these mats. And then the stunt double did it and span and all the way down. It was amazing. <laughs> How long did the shooting take to make this film? It was seven months, you know. Yeah, we shot about two months in New Zealand, and then uh, and then five months in Prague, and a little bit in Poland, Slovenia. Have you been away from home that long period of time? Um, you know what? Yeah, the last sort of three years, I've, I haven't really been in London very much at all. Um, okay, so you don't get homesick at all. So, well, <laughs> you know, sometimes a little bit, you know. Now that the film comes out and everybody knows you, almost the whole world knows you. Can you still go out alone? But, yeah, I mean, it's another, at least another sort of 
five weeks till it's out in, in, in England, where I'm from. So as soon as I get back there, it'll come out, and it'll be perfect timing just to be really awkward. But um, Have you started to feel all the attention? Um, do you know what? I, I think is I've, been, I've been going to premieres and going to events and screenings and, and, and you know, press launches and things. So the attention at those places is obviously very high. Right. So I, I don't know whether, you know, whether it's going to translate to, you know, if I go and get a cup of coffee, if do, people are going to be there. Do you need there, but... the bodyguards or do you need disguise? Are yeah, you offering to be my bodyguard? Trust me. <laughs> I don't know. What are, your, what, are your, what are your qualifications? <laughs> well, I know um, Taekwondo. <laughs> well, there you go. Perfect. All right. Let's do it. The, people bodyguard. wouldn't suspect it. No, you no, see. no. We'll, we'll, we'll hold hands when we go out. So right. They don't. They don't. They don't. Right. And that. then they start, and you'll be like, <laughs> and they'll be like, where did that come from? If you go out with a huge, big guy, like rippling, big, yeah. enormous guy, people would see people, you. people, people again it. You know, but yeah. you'll be like, secret. <laughs> when you first get that offer for the role, who was the first person that you shared this? My mom. My mom. Yeah, she was the first person. She was so, so excited. Have they seen the movie? Yeah, they saw it at the New York premiere. They were what did they there. I was sitting next to them and, you know, my mum was watching it and she kept, you know, looking over to me going, so you know, it's really good. My brother and dad, nothing. They, the whole way through they were like, <laughs> I just see that they were totally, just completely the in the moment. Uh -huh. Like, I couldn't get their distracted. Do you like it? Yeah, they were just completely entranced by the, uh -huh. by the story, which was the biggest compliment. <laughs> now thinking back, do you remember what you had to do uh, during the audition? I do. I am, um, my first audition, I just taped um, a scene. Um, I think it was the um, argument scene with, with, with Peter. But they come back from the night raid and they've made all the mistakes and they argue. And then, and then in the screen test that I did, I there was there was sort of swords lined up on this sofa and I sort of picked one and I was like just running around the room, you know, swinging it and fighting with a guy with an umbrella, I think, <laughs> yeah. knocking over the camera stands and you know. And there was three scenes. I think it was that scene and, and a scene, a flirting scene with with Susan, which is not in the final film. Um, so yeah, it was it was it was it was, it was <laughs> thankfully brief. This auditioning is not fun. Right, but speaking of the sore, have you done you know sore fight fighting scenes before? I've done a little bit on stage, but but, but very different mm -hmm. type of thing. You know, it's all very fake. In this, you really got to get into it. You right. know, but it's how, fun. How long did it take you to learn that? We kind of did it. I don't really know because we kind of did it gradually over the course of um, mm -hmm. over the course of the shoot. Right. Um, we had this great New Zealand stunt team who, you know, just choreograph everything perfectly. And the great thing is I can never lose because I'm in the next story. Right. So even if nine guys come at me at the same time, I can still <laughs> get rid of them. I think it's a grittier, darker story. Now we go on a whole new adventure that we've never seen. Characters we've never met. It's a whole different world. The story introduces the Prince Caspian, who will actually feature in the next three of these stories. Caspian has to learn how to be a leader. It's a very interesting coming of age story, really. Because of the way the last film was structured, action was really the button on the end of the film, whereas in Prince Caspian, it was more inherent to the story. The battles are going to be really epic in this one. I think people are going to be amazed by what they see. On The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, we did a fair amount of uh, R&D work because a, a number of the visual effects that we had in that movie had not been done before. This time we've got creatures built, we've done the design work, it gives us the opportunity to actually play more on screen. I mean, I always wanted in the battle to see the different ways these individual creatures fight. And now we can do more of that. We can see how fawns fight differently from minotaurs and centaurs and griffins, and I think that's going to be really fun. This wonderful sense of nostalgia in the story that I actually feel uh, about as a filmmaker going back into this experience. It's unlike the first film. It has far more action, it has uh, more drama. I really think it's an amazing, exciting, thrilling ride. Walt Disney Pictures and Walden Media invite you to return to Narnia.